All right, I guess we're gonna get started for tonight. Um, I want to welcome all the members tonight to um, our program, Curator's Choice, Mediterranean by Design. Tonight we're joined by Sylvia Borisiane. Sylvia is the Senior Curator of the Wilsonian FIU and writer on aspects of 20th century design and material culture. During her tenure, she has curated many exhibitions, including The Rebirth of Rome, Modern Dutch Design, and Made in Italy, Mita Textile Design, which was mounted in collaboration with the Wilsoniana, the sister institution in Genoa in Italy, where she has served as founding curator. Tonight, Sylvia is gonna take us on a journey through the changing architectural landscape of South Florida in the 1920s and 30s, as we see a Mediterranean revival that transitions into the Art Deco style we know and love today. After Sylvia's presentation, we'll open the floor up for questions. Sylvia, take it away. Thank you, thank you, Alex. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for joining us. And um, so the, my choice tonight is uh, talking about uh, uh, the legacy of the Mediterranean, uh, of the Mediterra Mediterranean vocabulary in uh, the architecture of South Florida and in particular uh, of Miami. Um, I selected uh, um, mostly uh, objects, uh, let's say architectural drawings, postcards, uh, uh, books, uh, and ephemera from uh, the Wilsonian collection. Uh, so I try to, I, I'm telling a story based also uh, on our material. And um, I was thinking of South Florida, then in the, in the end I realized that I'm focusing uh, mostly on the Miami area. Uh, but uh, I would start uh, from uh, um, uh, San Diego, California, where uh, the, in 1915, uh, um, the Panama uh, California International Exhibition uh, Exposition was uh, held. Uh, it was the celebration of uh, what is now called uh, Spanish colonial revival. Uh, um, the architect, uh, Bertram Godhu, was a Boza architect who uh, was inspired uh, uh, by the architecture of Mexico, the Baroque arch uh, architecture of Mexico, uh, to create uh, this uh, um, incredible uh, uh, fairground, uh, which, uh, was, uh, um, which became uh, very influential in uh, California, and um, also inspired by the mission uh, uh, style in California, and, um, and came uh, to, uh, to Florida. But actually, um, Florida had or was already familiar with uh, this uh, Spanish colonial uh, style because uh, uh, in the same year, in 1915, the same uh, exhibition, so they both, uh, uh, San Diego and uh, um, San Francisco, both celebrated uh, the opening of the Panama Canal. Uh, in uh, San Francisco, uh, there were uh, uh, all the US uh, uh, states presenting their own pavilion, and uh, uh, while most of them were in uh, like a classicist style, uh, the, uh, the Florida pavilion uh, presented uh, a, um, this, uh, again, uh, Spanish uh, colonial uh, style, uh, and uh, it's interesting to see that the architect was ba uh, Bernard Maybach, uh, a California architect, famous for being part of the arts and craft movement. Uh, but uh, he, uh, he was the one who designed uh, the Florida Pavilion because he was already familiar with the uh, Florida architecture. He collaborated uh, with uh, Carrere and Hastings, uh, who was his uh, schoolmate when he studied in uh, the Colle de Beaux-Arts in uh, uh, Paris. Uh, he collaborated with them in the building of the Alcazar Hotel and uh, the Ponce de Leon Hotel in St. Augustine, Florida. So uh, we talk about uh, this uh, kind of Spanish-inspired architecture already uh, at the end of the uh, 1880s, uh, when uh, Florida was, uh, uh, like starting from St. Augustine, uh, was becoming a, a, a resort for uh, uh, northern uh, healthy uh, tourists um, who came uh, to, to Florida, starting from uh, northern Florida, uh, thanks to the no, uh, new railroad uh, um, built by Henry Flagler. So he was, uh, a, Henry Flagler was a 
um, uh, uh, let's say a railroad and a hotel a tycoon uh, that we all know. Um, and uh, he built several uh, hotels uh, throughout uh, Florida, starting from St. Augustine uh, down to Palm Beach with the breakers. Uh, so, what I would like to, to show is this uh, Mediterranean legacy, uh, which uh, we can find uh, in the architects of the first generation who started to, uh, to build in, uh, uh, during the so-called Florida boom, so in the 1920s, up to the uh, 30s, like the, let's say the second generation of architects uh, were uh, trained uh, uh, like more... Uh, in more technical schools usually. Uh, so no, none of the young architects attended the uh, Col de Bazaar in Paris, for example. Um, so um, I would start uh, uh, talking about uh, the, f the first collaboration uh, between uh, Martin Luther Hampton, a, an architect originally from uh, South Carolina who uh, was training, uh, trained at the University of uh, uh, Columbia University in New York and uh, came to Miami um, and started uh, to, uh, to work with uh, George Merrick. Uh, as you know, George Merrick is the visionary uh, planner of uh, Coral Gables uh, who created a team of architects at the beginning of the 1920s uh, to create uh, this uh, uh, garden city in, um, in South Florida. Um, the, the Country Club uh, was one of the first buildings uh, built uh, uh, by, by uh, the architect was uh, Martin Luther Hampton, uh, but a young architect came to help him, L. Murray Dixon, who was uh, 10 years uh, uh, younger, he was uh, in his early 20s while uh, uh, Hampton was in his uh, early 30s. Um, so uh, Elmer Dixon is the architect that we associate with uh, uh, the Art Deco uh, Miami Beach, but actually he started uh, like trained with these uh, bazaar architects. And uh, in, um, in this building, that unfortunately the photo is not uh, the best, uh, we can see the characters of uh, this uh, Mediterranean revival that was adopted by uh, George Merrick and his architects. To, uh, it was an invention inspired by, uh, in particular, the, the vernacular architecture of the Mediterranean basin. That's why in, uh, in, Fl in Florida, usually they use the term Mediterranean revival. So uh, these uh, architects uh, uh, traveled to, to Europe, mostly Spain and Italy. And uh, when they came back, they created this uh, style, which, uh, was, uh, which took from uh, Spain and Italy the use of uh, uh, lodges, uh, porches, uh, patios, uh, and uh, the use of... Um, um, uh, and the use of uh, grilled, uh, grills on... Uh, uh, at the windows, uh, and uh, from uh, the Moorish and the Persian tradition, uh, the use of uh, uh, tiles and uh, um, lanterns, very ornate lanterns, uh, and, uh, uh, and also another element that they took from the Mediterranean basin is the use of tiles, uh, tiles for uh, terracotta tiles for the roof and for uh, uh, the, the floor. Um, so this was the first collaboration of uh, Elmer Dixon, who uh, was uh, very uh, young. He just uh, came, he was from, Flo uh, from Florida, but uh, went to uh, study at the Technical Institute of uh, um, Atalanta. And uh, uh, while traveling uh, from Miami to Atlanta, met on the train uh, uh, Leonard Schultz uh, was uh, like the, the founder together with Weaver of the Schultz and Weaver uh, um, uh, firm uh, based in New York. Uh, uh, um, Schultz invited uh, Ham, um, sorry, uh, Elmer Dixon uh, to work uh, with, uh, with them in New York in their uh, firm, uh, which was already very um, in 1923, when they met, was already uh, famous because of uh, the construction of uh, luxury hotels, uh, starting from, uh, for example, the Biltmore chain, in, uh, first in Los Angeles, then in Atlanta, 
then in Havana, and uh, finally in Coral Gables. Uh, Elmer Dixon collaborated with uh, Schultz and Weaver in the, in the building of the Roni Praza, um, one of the uh, big grand hotels uh, uh, that uh, were built uh, in the 1920s in Miami Beach, when Miami Beach was uh, the uh, sea resort for, uh, uh, like, the, um, let's say, healthy um, um, residents coming from uh, the north. So, uh, grand hotels and, uh, um, and uh, luxury mansions. Uh, <clears throat> the... Um, the hotel that was uh, uh, demolished, uh, uh, unfortunately, in, in the 1960s uh, was, uh, was the first uh, uh, hotel built, uh, uh, like the first bi uh, big uh, hotel beast, uh, built along the, the beach on Collins. It was so big that uh, um, occupied one lot uh, between 23rd and 24th. And uh, <clears throat> as you can see, uh, rough uh, walls are typical of uh, Mediterranean revival, and the tower, the tower, uh, like the colossal tower on the on the corner, is also uh, very typical. And uh, this is one of the drawings from our collection. The Wilsonian owns uh, the archives of Schutz and Weaver, and uh, <clears throat> the tower is an element that comes uh, from uh, uh, the Giralda Tower in the uh, ca uh, Cathedral of uh, Sevilla. Uh, but uh, it, will, it is also in the Biltmore Hotel in Coral Gables. We know that uh, the Biltmore Hotel was also built by Schultz and Weaver. Uh, but actually, there was a, a, a plan for uh, the hotel, which was uh, <coughs> made by Martin Luther Hampton for George Merrick uh, before uh, uh, Schultz and Weaver. So probably the idea of the tower is, uh, comes from, from uh, Martin Hampton. Uh, then Merrick joined uh, with uh, um, Bowman, the, uh, the owner of the Biltmore chain, and so uh, he uh, wanted to use uh, his uh, architects, Schutz and Weaver. Um, this painting that you probably all know because it's uh, in permanent display at the Woodsonian is, uh, 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 was um, made by uh, Lloyd Morgan, who was a partner uh, as, associate of uh, Schultz and Weaver, and uh, it, uh, it really explains uh, the evolution from uh, the uh, Mediterranean revival that we can see uh, along the coast of the hotels uh, designed uh, for, uh, the, uh, for uh, Florida by Schultz and Weaver, and then uh, the transition uh, to a more uh, Art Deco style uh, in the skyscrapers uh, in the background of New York. And this transition to um, Art Deco was uh, for sure, uh, um, um, let's say, um, uh, helped by, uh, influenced by the presence of uh, uh, Lloyd Morgan, who also uh, influenced uh, this, uh, the same Elmore Dixon to, um, uh, to, to, to move from a Mediterranean uh, uh, picturesque uh, architecture to a more uh, uh, abstract uh, Art Deco in, uh, in the 1930s. Uh, Elmer Dixon collaborated also with uh, uh, Schutz and Weaver on the Ingram building, uh, which, was, uh, mm, which is an, an interesting uh, building, not, uh, not so much a Mediterranean revival, but more uh, looking at the um, a Renaissance, a re uh, Renaissance revival. It, uh, it is inspired by a kind of Florentine uh, um, palace with a rusticated uh, uh, surface. Uh, and um, it's the first uh, um, high rise, uh, like uh, office high rise, uh, uh, looking in Miami, looking at the school, uh, uh, at the Chicago School of Architecture. Um, after uh, these two big projects with uh, Schultz and Weaver, uh, Elmer Dixon um, leaves New York, even if he was working on two projects which were in Miami, and uh, uh, decides to, to move to Miami and become a licensed architect, uh, so to work on his own. But his last big project that he does with, a, uh, with another uh, uh, firm, uh, Paste and Stewart, uh, is the post office in Miami. In this case, uh, he 
uh, finally signs uh, the project too. Um, Paste and uh, Stewart are uh, at the same uh, training, uh, Bozart training, like uh, Schultz and Weaver. Uh, they were in the group of, uh, uh, in the Cora Grebos uh, group. Uh, Paste was uh, like uh, the chief architect since uh, 1925 of the Coral Gables uh, project. And uh, this building, which is uh, very like a, a colossal, uh, characterized by this uh, colossal colonnade on the front uh, and as a patio inside, uh, looks at uh, other projects by Paste and Stewart, like the colonnade or uh, the uh, city hall in uh, Coral Gables. It was made, uh, what's interesting is it's made uh, um, of uh, limestone, so the local uh, Florida stone, and, um, and so it's the biggest building, uh, public building, uh, made out of this uh, local uh, stone. Uh, two postcards uh, show the, the building when it was uh, built, uh, inaugurated in, 19, in 1933, we were like in the like, uh, depression period, and uh, this other postcard that shows the patio, this Mediterranean flavor given by uh, the patio. Uh, the, uh, the postcard uh, of the patio comes from the collection of Larry Wiggins, uh, who is uh, our colleague, uh, is a Wilsonian accountant, but also a, a Miami historian and uh, a great collector of postcards and a great source of information for uh, anything we do about uh, uh, Miami and Florida architecture. Um, so digging in our uh, postcards, uh, I found uh, this, uh, this are, um, representation of a typical uh, villa in the Palm Beach style that you could find in Miami Beach uh, in, uh, until the 19, uh, well, at least until the 1950s. Uh, this, uh, this, this is one of the villas uh, uh, that were built on the so-called the Millionaire's Row which started from uh, um, on Collins from 44th Street to uh, 59th, where now the uh, Bath, Club, Bath Club still is. None of them uh, is the, still there, but you can see like the opulence and the, the Mediterranean revival of this uh, uh, house, uh, which was designed by uh, William Lindler, who is credited to have designed the, the Ritz Hotel in uh, um, in Miami. So uh, naturally these uh, uh, mansions were uh, for a winter residence. So during the hurricane season, they needed a place where they could store their precious furnishings. So in 1926, uh, there was the big hurricane that uh, uh, destroyed Miami and Miami Beach. So in 1927, uh, the um, Washington Storage Building uh, was uh, uh, designed uh, by uh, Robertson and Patterson. Uh, I assume you are familiar with this building. Um, so the, the architects were another uh, uh, firm who uh, created a partnership in 1923. Uh, Robertson came from Alabama and uh, was trained in New York while Patterson uh, uh, was trained at the University of uh, Pennsylvania. Um, the, this building is very interesting because it's Mediterranean revival, uh, but it's very square, just uh, um, it looks like a fortress uh, in a way. And uh, uh, what is interesting is uh, like the use uh, uh, is a tribute to the so-called plateresque style which was uh, a style uh, in vogue in uh, uh, Spain and in uh, its uh, territories from the 15th century uh, up to the 16th century. And uh, um, this is a, 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 an evident reference to the um, entrance uh, um, of the University of Salamanca in uh, Spain. And so you can see some of the typical element of plateresque, which, uh, which is like a, almost a, the decoration of a, a jewelry-like decoration, very dense uh, with uh, pinnacles, uh, with uh, shields, uh, and uh, we can find it uh, um, transposed on the Washington star uh, storage building. And then the contrast uh, usually with the very uh, plain uh, wall surfaces. Uh, Robertson and Patterson were active in uh, Miami and Miami Beach. 
In, um, in Miami Beach, they designed in uh, 1925 uh, the Club Lido, uh, which was demolished. And you have, uh, again, uh, uh, Mediterranean elements and Moorish elements in the two domes on the sides. And um, their style, as many of these architects, also the older generation, like the exuberant uh, Beaux-Arts architects, uh, their style was then abstracted, uh, influenced by Art Deco, by the international style in Europe. And so in 1940, uh, you have uh, this uh, high rise with, with uh, like, uh, mm, uh, uh, let's say, wraparound uh, balconies, the typical of uh, uh, the international style, the eyebrows over the uh, windows, which are a typical element of, uh, element of uh, Miami Beach uh, modern Art Deco architecture. And um, so uh, the, the Washington storage was built in 1927. And in the same year, so just uh, as, a, as a statement against the hurricane, the uh, Miami Beach uh, uh, built its own city hall, uh, these uh, nine story. Uh, be a tall building which looked at the um, let's say more renaissance a revival uh, with the elements uh, uh, it's very strange the, we have this photograph in our uh, archive but uh, there are not the urns that uh, are uh, uh, are still uh, uh, on the building so i'm wondering if it was uh, maybe was uh, under renovation or it was photographed during hurricane or after hurricane very strange. Anyway, now the Hearns are back there. And anyway, the, the architect is again Martin Luther Hampton. So he was very active, one of the most prolific architects uh, of the period. He was um, active in, uh, in, in Tampa, in Palm Beach, in uh, Coral Gables, uh, and uh, in Miami Springs, uh, well, uh, where he, he built in uh, uh, Pueblo de, de Co style. Um, for the new estate of uh, uh, the uh, avi uh, pioneer aviator, Glenn Curtis. Uh, this is a beautiful uh, uh, watercolor in the collection of the residence at Davis Island uh, that we haven't identified uh, yet. Um, and again, also uh, Martin uh, uh, Luther Hampton in, uh, in the middle of, in the mid thirties uh, uh, turned to a much uh, cleaner, uh, abstracted, uh, uh, style in the embassy hotel you can see also the elements of the um, the shields they are uh, just uh, abstracted uh, elements uh, art deco elements and uh, even the brochure is very interesting if we compare it to the brochure of the uh, ronnie plaza it it, pre it, pre it uh, presents uh, the building as a white uh, cube like a, almost like a, a Mediterranean vernacular uh, um, house of the, uh, of the coast. Still uh, <clears throat> by uh, Martin uh, Luther Hampton is this building, uh, the, uh, the Sheridan Theater, um, an example, a very beautiful example of Art Deco, uh, which is like uh, this uh, presents the typical um, um, combination of vertical elements and uh, uh, streamlined uh, horizontal uh, lines. And uh, this uh, beautiful theater was demolished in the 1980s, so there is not much uh, documentation about it. Um, so, my. Um, mm, Elmore Dixon uh, moved uh, after working uh, with uh, um, Paste and uh, Stewart, uh, moved uh, to Miami Beach uh, in uh, 1933. It was uh, like uh, Miami Beach was recovering from uh, uh, the crash of 1929 and uh, was uh, booming as a, uh, a resort place uh, to, to service uh, middle class tourism. Um, you can see uh, these are the first uh, projects that my, uh, Murray Dixon uh, makes uh, for uh, Miami, Be Miami Beach. So in the meantime, uh, we had uh, the uh, Paris exhibition in 1925 uh, that uh, celebrated uh, Art Deco um, architecture. 
so in the meantime, Art Deco uh, became, was a style that was in vogue in, uh, in the States. Uh, so Miami Beach in the beginning uh, presents this kind of uh, um, Mediterranean, uh, um, let's say modernized uh, classicism. Um, if you look at, the, at these, uh, uh, how, uh, these um, apartments, uh, they have a, a, a patio, a courtyard, uh, they use the roof ties, uh, they have uh, the grills, uh, and, um, and uh, the other also, his, uh, let's say, his rival, Henry O. Hauser, who moved to Miami in 1932 from uh, New York, uh, after uh, working in New York, uh, especially in the Bronx, uh, uh, in the Grand Concourse in, uh, Bronx, uh, in the Bronx with his uh, cousin, William Hauser. So they, they both uh, start uh, uh, building in Miami Beach uh, using this uh, uh, kind of simplified Mediterranean style. And uh, a, a very interesting building is the uh, Park Van Dome apartment. I don't have a photograph of the building because it's impossible to take a picture of it. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a very beautiful uh, uh, building with a courtyard with the use of uh, Moorish ties with the embedded urns, all elements that you can find in Mediterranean architecture in the 1920s. And uh, I found this uh, picture from the Herald naturally thanks to Larry Wiggins. Um, in, um, so, and it's so interesting to see how Henry Hauser, uh, and Murray um, Dixon arrival, in 1935, so one year before, he designed the Colony Hotel, which is one of the uh, iconic uh, Art Deco hotels uh, on, uh, on Ocean Drive. So how he, uh, like uh, there is a dichotomy in uh, their uh, um, uh, planning between a more uh, like a modern uh, streamlined uh, style where you have uh, there is, the, is this typical uh, combination of uh, vertical elements and uh, uh, horizontal. You can see the use of the ribbon windows, uh, the eyebrows here too. So in the same years, the, uh, uh, an architect like uh, Hohauser uh, could use a more uh, like Mediterranean uh, um, style and a more uh, Art Deco modernist style. Uh, well, naturally, uh, the Chicago World's Fair was very influential in uh, 1933. Um, it was as influential for the UN United States as the Paris exhibition was uh, for Europe in 1925. So if you look at, the, at this uh, um, corner uh, tower, uh, you can find it uh, like in a at a, at a lower scale in uh, the architecture of uh, uh, Henry Hauser. This is the famous Essex Hotel, uh, which, uh, uh, which is very streamlined. Uh, like if you look at the shape, this uh, 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 curved uh, um, uh, co uh, coins, but, uh, uh, but in the same time, uh, still looks at uh, the architect, uh, the Mediterranean architecture with the use of the uh, of the porch, but everything is uh, is a simpl a simplified and uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, mutual influence between these architects. You can see the senator again with the use of the uh, spire at the corner and. Um, the um, again like the the columns which are very stylized the use of the uh, portals which are inspired by a naval architecture and um, and finally the Kent uh, by L. Murray Dixon uh, it's uh, it's very uh, like it, it looks more modern uh, what is interesting is like this uh, that we call Art Deco um, for Miami Beach uh, Mickey Watson uh, defines it uh, democratic art deco because uh, uh, if you look at this architecture, uh, it's, uh, it's quite poor. They don't use uh, um, marble like in uh, New York or Chicago in the, uh, in the luxury grand hotel, art deco art, um, art, um, hotels that you can find in the like, metropolitan, metropolitan city, big cities. Uh, 
Uh, here it's usually the use of limes, local uh, limestone, and then uh, it's just uh, uh, plaster and uh, naturally the use of cement uh, that uh, they, they got rid of the ornamentation of the 1920s and um, this uh, architecture which is very uh, streamlined. Um, but still, uh, if you look at this uh, um, apartment building by Elmore Dixon, he was uh, uh, very like always using uh, uh, classical elements uh, with the kind of humor. If you look, this is a typical Art Deco building uh, with the stepped uh, tower, the spire, uh, the portals, uh, the use of the eyebrows uh, to protect uh, from the sun. Uh, and uh, symmetry, which is very, it's uh, mostly, mostly of these uh, buildings have, uh, are very symmetric, uh, the corner windows, uh, but then in the center you have this uh, beautiful big uh, uh, modern window, but then uh, with these uh, uh, pil uh, pilasters and on the top uh, uh, classical urns. So the kind of uh, playful uh, ways of uh, Al Almore Dixon was uh, really able to create uh, um, different uh, languages for uh, his uh, architecture in Miami Beach. Um, so I would like to, to go back to the word spheres as I started uh, with the word, uh, word fair. So I would like to end up with, a, uh, with like, uh, the influence of the word spheres on uh, architecture. Um, in uh, Chicago, in 1933, Florida uh, presented the Florida Tropical uh, House. It was a group of model houses that was presented um, by the lake uh, on, on the model of the Stuttgart uh, Weisenhof uh, Siedlung, uh, which was presented uh, in um, at the Berg Berkbund exhibition in 1927. Uh, Florida presented this uh, beautiful uh, uh, modern, uh, modernist uh, home, uh, which was uh, naturally inspired by the in that international style, uh, but uh, uh, like with this uh, use of uh, like outdoor space, uh, the roof terraces, which are an, an element that uh, was also already in a Mediterranean uh, architecture, uh, the, the use of the tubular uh, um, uh, balustrade, uh, the cantilevered, uh, um, the cantilevered, um, I mean, these uh, huge eyebrow, eyebrows uh, to, to protect by the sun. So it was built uh, uh, appropriate to the, um, to the, uh, the, sorry, the tropical uh, climate, so uh, to resist to the hurricane, uh, but also to enjoy the tropical uh, uh, breeze. And, um, and uh, what is interesting is that uh, that was uh, probably, uh, sorry, I forgot to say that the architect was uh, uh, Robert Lowweed, uh, a very interesting architect, again, uh, who studied more uh, with a more uh, um, bizarre uh, um, uh, architecture and then uh, um, developed a, a, an art deco and then more uh, a streamlined architecture. For example, in uh, Miami Beach, uh, uh, he designed uh, the fire station, and uh, in um, uh, in Miami, uh, the shrine building, which is the the uh, the Art Deco building just next to the Arch Center, still uh, still surviving on uh, Biscayne Boulevard. Uh, anyway, he was a very interesting architect, and uh, he uh, collaborated. Uh, with uh, Paste and Stewart on the design of uh, the tropical uh, uh, home uh, for the Chicago World's Fair. Uh, but then in the same uh, fair, uh, Paste and Stewart uh, presented in the Court of States uh, this uh, very like uh, uh, Spanish uh, revival uh, uh, space uh, with arches uh, and uh, columns uh, and uh, with the uh, uh, mural uh, descriptions of uh, uh, the um, uh, history of the colonial history of uh, uh, Florida, which uh, has been always uh, kind of uh, made uh, legendary through uh, to create uh, a, um, a Spanish colonial heritage uh, uh, to Florida. Uh, so the, the dichotomy uh, between uh, like a more Mediterranean uh, 
um, language and the more uh, modern uh, modern language is the still uh, is always present and it's very interesting that in 1939 Peyton Stewart went back to a very like a Mediterranean revival building uh, at the New York Woods Fair which was called the World of Tomorrow but Florida was present with this uh, uh, very revivalist uh, building. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, if you, if you have any questions. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna um, open up the Q&A. If you have a question, um, the Q&A button below is enabled, so feel free to ask Sylvia a question. Um, Sylvia, thank you for your presentation. It was I've really seen. wonderful seeing all of these photos and you know the postcards too um, that Larry uh, so generously um, let us use for tonight's presentation. Um, we have one question from Martha right now. It says, were there any Michigan architects such as Albert Kahn active with the Ford Motor Company at the 1933 Century of Progress Fair who were commissioned to produce work in Miami? Uh, from Michigan? Uh, I, I don't uh, recall at the moment. Uh, I should ask Larry. <laughs> but um, I, don't, I don't know. Most of the architects uh, came from, uh, uh, many came from uh, Ohio or, uh, no, I have to say that uh, I don't know of any from uh, Michigan but probably there were. I mean, I should, there were so many, I just selected some of the architects, but as you know, there were so many, I mean, it, especially thinking of Miami Beach in the 1930s, it was a, uh, it was a really a new town. We, we have a, an article district because uh, it's a, an incredible uh, urban planning. It's still an incredible example of uh, like the work of several architects who, um, influenced themselves and uh, were competing but they worked on their uh, small lot and they couldn't they they never uh, just tried to obscure each, each other um, we received it wasn't a, a question but a comment from Susie that um, she really enjoyed the presentation as I think a lot of us did um, so thank you for that I also want to mention that I, before, you know, we, we, I saw the presentation, I was actually, I learned for the first time about like that connection between, you know, the Washington storage building and like the, the, the detailing on that. So that was something new that I learned today. So I just want to thank you, Sylvia, for that. Well, it's uh, something that uh, from uh, from the beginning, I remember always Mickey Wilson saying, oh, that's uh, it's the University of Salamanca. So, mm -hmm. but it's something that, uh, yes, we don't say so, so often, but I think it's a very strong uh, connection with that. Yeah. Can you also go into, um, you mentioned this um, previously about this term democratic art deco. Uh, sure. Yeah, so this is something, uh, again, that uh, w one day, like uh, uh, having a conversation uh, with uh, Miki, he talks about uh, democratic art deco, uh, because, uh, well, naturally, my, Miami Beach was, a, uh, in the 1920s, it was all uh, luxury hotels and uh, uh, these opulent uh, Palm Beach style uh, uh, mansions. But after the Great Depression, it became like the resort middle class tourism. And so even in the architecture, you don't see like the uh, architects adopt, adopted uh, like the uh, more, uh, uh, let's say, opulent and uh, um, precious uh, um, article style that you could find in uh, New York or uh, Chicago, for example, uh, to these uh, hotels and apartment uh, buildings uh, on the beach, uh, which were uh, uh, made out of, most of the times uh, there was no marble, uh, but it was uh, like stucco or uh, 
uh, the, 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 the floors, like the beautiful floors of the hotels uh, in uh, Miami, they are all terrazzo floors. It's never like marble floor. It's very difficult. I um, have a comment from David. He says, it's a pity that so many great buildings in Miami Beach were demolished, um, like the Rooney, Ronnie Plaza and many other hotels. Do you have any comments about that? Well, yeah, it's terrible. And um, the, the thing that, uh, I mean, they've done it in the 60s, they've done it in the 80s. Uh, the problem that they still done, uh, they still do it now. And uh, yes, yeah, we should do something. I mean, we, we try to do something against it, but uh, um, yes, there is not real, no, no real protection. Even uh, the Art Deco district is not, uh, um, is not really protected, it's recognized as uh, like um, a heritage, but um, yes, it's not uh, protected at all. Um, are there any German influences from Bauhaus or a Fagesschule's building as examples of America Art Deco? Uh, yes, I mean, it's a uh, also, when I showed some of the buildings, uh, uh, for sure, like, um, so if you look at this one, it's, uh, some elements are uh, typical, like the ribbon window, or like this uh, um, the wraparound window is an in Le Corbusier, for example, it's one of these, uh, of these elements, like the roof terrace, uh, is something that you find in Bauhaus, uh, but for example, uh, it's very interesting because uh, in um, it's an element that you find also in a vernacular uh, old architecture, uh, Mediterranean architecture. That's why I always think that there is also a kind of a Mediterranean influence also in a building like this, which looks so modernist. Now the um, this uh, horizontal uh, horizontality. Uh, and then the contrast with the um, the verticality of the window on the on the corner. Um, yes, for sure there are there are influences in uh, in Miami architecture, Miami Art Deco architecture um, from the international style. Because you know the MoMA did the exhibition in 1932, so I'm sure that these architects uh, they went to uh to see the chicago world fair but uh, they were also influenced by the magazines uh, from the period and uh, from uh, european uh, international style you highlighted the biltmore and coral gables um do any of the other biltmores built around that period look the same um the sorry the the other biltmore uh, hotels no sorry <laughs> what was it can you repeat the, the question? Yeah, so um, I know that there, we mentioned the Biltmore that's in Coral yeah. Gables. Um, the question was if there are any other Biltmore buildings built around that time that looked the same. Look like that? Uh, uh, well, I don't think so because that's why the, the element of the tower, it's true that uh, I think that uh, Schutz and Weaver appropriated of that motif from uh, Martin Hampton because the other built more uh, like the one in, in uh, Los Angeles and the one in um, uh, Atlanta uh, they are not uh, all uh, Mediterranean revival except there are some elements in the one in uh, Los Angeles uh, inside that could be like Mediterranean revival but um, the one in Havana is a, just an addition, so it's uh, for sure it's uh, it's influenced by like Spanish uh, revival, and uh, the one uh, what is the last one? There is one in Atlanta. Uh, no, I think it's no, no Atlanta. I think uh, I said uh, it's. At, I mean, they are all a uh, huge monumental and. Uh, uh, for sure, for a kind of uh, um, high-end uh, tourism, but um, probably the the Biltmore is in, uh, in Coral Gables uh, is the most interesting. Mm. I agree. 
Mm -hmm. um, so tonight I just want to wrap up the program and thank Sylvia for taking the time to join us. Um, if you enjoyed tonight's program, we encourage you to tell your friends and loved ones about the Lithuanian and to become a member. Um, they can sign up on our website to become a member or they can sign up for our newsletter to stay up to date with our upcoming programming. Um, thank you for attending tonight's program and we hope to see you next month. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you.